Hi, in this series of videos, I'm going to talk about installing ACI Multisite Orchestrator version 2.0. In this first video, what I'm going to talk about is only the deployment of the Multisite Orchestrator cluster and some of the basic configuration you need to do to get that cluster operational. In future videos, I'll go into detail about configuring the orchestrator itself to work with ACI. So there are some prerequisites to be aware of. You need to be running ACI version 3.0 or later. That's when we first introduced Multisite. I do recommend that you check later versions of ACI because there might be some new capabilities, features, or scale that we added, and that can help you make a choice as to which version of code you want to run to meet your needs. In terms of the sites, each of the sites must have at least one second generation spine. You can mix first gen with second gen, but note that only the second generation spines can participate in the multi-site configuration. And then when it comes to leaps, doesn't really matter, all models are supported. In terms of the orchestrator cluster itself, this is going to be three virtual machines. So we're going to run those on ESX 6.0 or later, and I've outlined some minimums in terms of CPU, memory, and disk that you'll need for each of those VMs. And then of course, each of the node members will need an IP address, plus DNS and NTP reachability. There are some design considerations to be aware of before you start. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a cluster of three virtual machines. You can deploy these VMs somewhere anywhere in the world, but you're going to need to do it on an out of band network. What I mean is don't have these things getting their connectivity through ACI, because if you lose the site, you lose access to your MSO. In fact, the cluster itself doesn't even have to be co-located at a place or a site where you have ACI. These could really be anywhere in the world. There is one gotcha. Prior to the current version of MSO, all of the VMs needed to have uh, specific host names of Node 1, Node 2, Node 3, exactly like that. In the current version, I think you can have any name that you want, but just be aware in case you're using an earlier version of MSO. In terms of network requirements, the latency between the VMs that form the cluster can be a maximum of 150 milliseconds. And then, of course, all of these cluster members need to be able to talk to each other to do what they need to do. So once you've got the cluster up and you want to start managing ACI sites, the latency between the cluster and any ACI site can be up to 1,000 milliseconds. So really, you can probably put this MSO cluster anywhere in the world and probably reach your sites. There are some ports that you need to have open in case you have a firewall or ACL, and I've outlined them here for you. And then just like with any technology, it's a good idea to read the release notes and the installation guide for the version that you're installing. Okay, let's get ready to deploy our OVAs for the very first time. So I created a cheat sheet for myself, and I recommend you do something similar. So I've got all my IP addresses laid out, I've got my gateway, my DNS, I know my NTP server. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out. When you deploy the OVA, it's going to ask you for a time zone string format, and that has to be in the format of area slash location. You can Google, there's a lot of, lots of sites that list all of those common string formats. In my case, it's Europe slash Amsterdam, exactly like that. Uh, and then one other thing is once we got, get done deploying all of this, there is a default admin password in the MSO GUI, and I've listed that here. Of, of course, you'll change that later. There is one OVA time saver that I want to detail before we get started. So, so you have a choice. You can deploy these OVAs through vCenter, which is recommended, or if you don't have vCenter, you can deploy these directly on an ESX host. But either way, you're going to download the same single OVA file from cisco.com, and inside that OVA file is a number of files, including two different OVF manifests, right? One for each method. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to uncompress or unpack or unzip the OVA and then choose the proper OVF. And if you don't do that, you're going to get an error when you try to upload this into vCenter and deploy. So I've, I've got a screenshot here of what's inside the OVAs once I expanded it. And I just pointed out you're going to be using one OVF if you're deploying through ESX, a different one on vCenter, but you're only going to pick one of those. The VMDK itself is the same for both, so no problems there. Okay, at this point, let's actually go into my lab, and I'm going to actually take you through the, the, the process uh, in a demo uh, of forming the cluster for the very first time. Okay, so I've already logged into my vCenter because that's the method I've chosen to deploy the OVFs, and I've already taken the liberty of uploading my files into what's called a content library in vCenter. You can use a content library or you can upload them directly into a data store. So you can see I've got my OVF template here, and what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this process three separate times, I'll right click and say new VM from template. We'll give the virtual machine a name in this particular case. I'll call it MSO-1, and we'll pick a location where to put it. 
And then we'll have to select an ESX host of where we want this to be deployed. We'll quickly review the details. Everything looks good, so we'll click Next. In terms of storage, you can deploy these as thin provisions, so go ahead and pick a data store where you have enough capacity to deploy all three of these. For networking, you'll have to pick a proper uh, pre-built port group where, where the IP address is that you pulled for each of these node members. You can use DHCP if you like. Now you are going to need to choose a root password and whatever password you choose, remember it because we're going to need to use it in just a, a few minutes. We're gonna to need to give the VM a host name. So just to be backwards compatible safe, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this node one. And then in terms of addresses, I've gone ahead and pre-populated the address mask and default gateway. Also the DNS server, my time zone in the proper format, and then an NTP server. And I'll go ahead and click next. Okay, with all of that done, I'll go ahead and click finish. Now note, you're gonna to have to do this two more times. And the only thing you'll probably change is just the IP address and the name of the node itself. So I'm not gonna show that. I'll go ahead and fast forward to having all three already deployed. Okay, while we're waiting for those three OVAs to copy and spin up, I just wanna go over the next steps we're going to do once that's done. So once those three OVAs are up and running, you wanna go ahead and SSH into all three nodes, in fact, ahead of time, make sure they're up and they can ping each other by address. Uh, but then we need to go through and we need to actually kick off a couple of scripts manually. So I've outlined the commands here. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show them uh, live in my particular lab and we'll go through it all. But what we're going to do is we're going to kick off a, a formation of a Docker cluster and we're going to have to do some scripts and we're going to have to do some really basic copy and paste. Don't worry, it's, it's not very difficult. And then once we, uh, we start that process, we're going to go and check the status of the nodes. We're going to check for some things. And again, I'll, I'll point those things out. Uh, uh, and then uh, we're going to complete the cluster. It does take a few minutes, I'd say, set aside maybe 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then once that's all done, we'll be able to, in fact, log in to the GUI. So let me actually show you me doing that in my lab live. Okay, so I've powered on the OVAs and I have gone ahead and SSH'd using the root account into each of the three nodes. So I have all three open at the same time and I suggest you do the same. In, uh, from the point of view of node one, I've pinged the other two nodes so they have reachability. Now the first step we need to do is we need to change into a directory. So we're gonna go into the following path and in my particular case, the version is 2.01c. Yours might be different if you're using a different version. And then we're going to finish that off by typing P-R-O-D-H-A and hit return. The next thing we want to do from node one is kick off a script that will begin building the cluster that's necessary for operation. So this is the command. I just go, gone ahead and pasted it in and you'll see that some things start to happen. Okay, I paused the video for about 30 seconds, but you can see some things have happened. Uh, some keys were created and things like that. But the most important thing here is if you read at the very bottom, there is a string that you're going to need to copy from here and paste into the other two nodes verbatim. So I'm just going ahead and copy this whole string right here and put it into my other two nodes. So let's go ahead and go into node number two and I'll go ahead and paste that command in and hit enter. Oh, I, I made a mistake. I need to uh, change into the proper directory first. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the directory that I needed to change to first, and then I can paste it. So you might make the same mistake, hopefully you won't. And we'll go ahead and do that also on node three. I'm not gonna show it for sake of time, but it's the exact same process I did on node two. So you can see from the perspective of node two, after pasting in that command and waiting a few seconds, you could see that this node joined the swarm as a manager. So I did the same thing in node number three. So what we can do now is we can issue another command just to check on the status. Did everything go okay with this process? So the command we're going to type is this, docker node ls. And if we see here, there's a couple of things we wanna point out. We see all three nodes, we see their status is ready, we see they're all active, and we see that they're reachable and one of them will be anointed as the leader. This is exactly what you wanna see. And now finally, from any node, one, two, or three, we're gonna type one more command to, to do the final step. And that command is this. It's a script that we're gonna launch from the directory that we're in. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Now this is gonna take a few minutes to spin up all the services. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back in a few minutes and I'll show you what it looks like once everything has settled. 
Okay, after about 12 or 13 minutes or so, all of the services have been installed and updated, and we're back to the command prompt. And now we want to check a final status before we log in. So we're going to type the command doc docker service ls, and we're going to see that everything is there. Everything has been uh, uh, replicated, and we can check that by looking at the replicas column and see that everything is one of one or three of three, uh, and that's exactly what you should see in your own environment. So now what we can do is we can go to a web browser, point it at one of the node uh, IPs, and be able to actually log into the GUI. Okay, so I've pointed it to node number one, but you can choose any node. Uh, and remember the default password of ad, uh, admin and welcome one, uh, bang, or welcome bang, uh, and then you can actually log in. And this is what you'll see. Now, that will conclude this video. In the next uh, set of videos, I'll actually go through all of the configurations that you would do to connect the multi-site orchestrator to your ACI sites. Thank you very much for watching.